Hello my dear friends, this is Prashant Mamani here and I welcome all of you in today's video lecture. Uh, this video lecture is part of uh, Polity, uh, uh, one of basic subject of your preparation. And in Polity we are going to discuss and understand discrimination. From discrimination we will uh, gently head towards equality and uh, bit by bit uh, we will take one by one different uh, things that fall under polity and from there we will move uh, towards uh, understanding constitution of India uh, governance polity and uh, many other things that fall under the domain of political science now the things that I am going to discuss with you today are the methodology which we are going to apply in this lecture is going to be that uh, I am not going to provide any spoon feeding. I'm sorry about that. Uh, I don't believe in it as well. Uh, I can train you to fly. Uh, I'm here to um, explain things. Uh, I'm not here to uh, provide you general knowledge stuff like uh, article 41 is what etc etc no that is something uh, which is uh, not a necessity for your examination as well you have to understand things and you have to develop in-depth knowledge uh, regarding on the subjects that you are studying <coughs> or any topic uh, that you are trying to understand now I have a strong feeling that I won't be able to uh, present this lecture in one part because uh, the things that I have included in this slide uh, so I think there could be two parts of this lecture or it could be three as well maximum three I'm definitely not going beyond 45 minutes so bear with me uh, I'm sorry about that uh, but the thing is that I if something if some topics demand explanation then I have to provide that and uh, uh, it is part of my uh, you can say it is part of my personality as well that I do not like to uh, stick on the surface I would I, I, I prefer to go a bit deep down and to understand things from its roots rather than learning uh, only from the fruits of a tree I hope you know what I mean moving on we are going to ask more questions to ourselves and uh, from this lecture uh, we are going to apply our thinking and imagination power and uh, my sole objective uh, from this lecture is to generate curiosity in you so that uh, you can uh, you can see things uh, and I have told you before as well that uh, once you develop an ability of reading things that are between the lines uh, from that point of time your development starts and you grow uh, with uh, just like compound interest in the same manner your growth becomes compound rather than a simple growth so let's start now as I told you we are going to ask more questions so the first question to you is what makes us who we are now to answer this question I would recommend you to pause this video lecture here and ask yourself that what makes you what you are what is your definition what are the things that makes you a person a whole person right uh, I've read a book uh, written by Amartya Sen uh, the name of that book is identity and violence and in this book uh, Amartya Sen explains that you cannot have one single identity now I'm not talking about Aadhaar card right I hope you understand it's a totally different thing but when you uh, are, say for example playing tennis in a tennis club at that point of time you are a member of a tennis club 
then later on you could be pay, playing piano as well or you could be learning piano you could be um, affiliated with a science college you could be a IS aspirant at the same time um, you might have different religious background uh, you could be a film stars fan a particular film stars fan or you could be living in a particular residential society you would be wearing a particular brand of denim jeans and you could be a citizen of a, a different country it could be India or it could be Pakistan or it could be any other country right so this all bits and pieces makes you a whole person you cannot have one identity even if you pause this video lecture here and if you um, dig down a little bit you will find that you would be associated with uh, IS exams at the same time you'd be doing job for a company or you could be doing business or something you could be from different religious backgrounds you would be belonging to middle class or upper class or lower class etc you'd be driving a particular car a particular brand whatever so your identity is different at different point of time you know uh, depending on situation your identity also uh, changes and this is something generally we ignore uh, we consider uh, some things uh, take over uh, or are there, uh, some things have more emphasis uh, while defining your identity say for example if you attend a marriage function and if you are being asked like what exactly you are doing at the moment then you might reply that you are preparing for uh, civil services examination and the person uh, after that he will be looking at you with uh, that glasses only that this gentleman or this lady here is preparing for civil services exam and uh, they could be uh, building uh, perceptions about you based on what they know about civil services they could be thinking like you would be good in general knowledge you would be knowing answers of each and everything that is under sun and uh, so this is an example you could be you could meet some person and uh, you may find that that person belongs to x religion and uh, you might think like uh, they would be like say for example if you meet someone who is Buddhist and you think like they would be uh, meditating, uh, they would be more, you know, uh, more peaceful, more silent, they would be moving slow like Buddha and all that thing. But uh, that is not always the case. And I'm not saying like they don't, they are not uh, practicing meditation or anything. This is just a hypothetical or many a times it's an example as well. So it depends. Each and every single person is uh, unique in himself. Um, they have a different identity at different time, right? So you have to understand this thing, because uh, if you ask yourself, if you put yourself in that uh, situation, and then when you compare things, then you will find like what I'm talking will start making some sense. Moving on, now the other thing that has uh, influence on our identity or, or what, uh, on like who we are is uh, there is a great impact of uh, geography and history on defining who we are. Let's take some example. Now if you would be living in different geographical location uh, based on the heat zone of uh, the world you can divide the world into three different parts the one is storage zone which is 23.5 degree north to 23.5 degree south that is particular also known as tropical zone right the area between tropic of cancer and tropic of capricorn now if you are living in this part of the world then you are living in a place where the earth receives maximum amount of sunlight now the more sunlight you will get let's say for example you are living in on an equatorial belt so naturally you would be living in a country uh, that is uh, hot 
Now, if you're living in a country that is hot, then the color of your skin would be relatively darker, isn't it? Because you're getting more sunlight. The more sunlight you get, uh, the more your skin, uh, I forgot the name of that thing, but uh, melolin or something, but I can't remember that thing, but uh, that is the thing that you have more in your skin and that is the reason why uh, your skin gets a bit darker. But if you are living somewhere in frigid zone, which is 66.5 uh, degree north to 90 degree and again south and north, we have two frigid zone. So if you are living here, then sun rays are slanting, so you would be getting less heat, isn't it? So your, the color of your skin would be fair. So that is something uh, geography has an impact on you. Now, if you're living in tropical area, then the color of your car would be, generally speaking, I'm not saying it is applicable to, uh, what I'm saying is 100% applicable. But generally speaking, if you see in India as well, you will find uh, white is uh, the most famous color uh, when you buy a car. Because Naturally, if you are living in, uh, again, in India as well, you have, uh, because our India has a, um, it's the range of uh, latitudes, uh, you have India, part of India is in torrid zone and part of India is in temperate zone. So, of course, if you are living in torrid zone, then you would prefer a white color for your car because then you would feel, if you, if you have a black car, then you know very well what happens in summertime gets really really hot even your air conditioner won't be of any use in your summertime if you have a black car now house as well the color of your interior would be different in different geographical zone the clothes that you wear do you know that uh, in countries like England and Russia and uh, if you observe in movies as well you will find uh, the suit they wear the, the, the jumpers or sweaters or the coats they wear, right, winter coats, they are always dark in color. They are always dark in color. The reason is, whatever heat a black coat can intercept, and the more it can keep you warm, is better for a country like Russia, isn't it? So that is the reason the color of their clothes are generally speaking dark but if you're living in a torrid zone then you would be very brave if you were something completely black or dark in color the reason is you won't be able to you won't be comfortable in that clothes in that color so these are some examples uh, about which you should give a good thought you can also see like if you you'll find a big market of air conditioner and uh, table fan and ceiling fan in this part of the world but as you go here as you move from this part to this part you'll find fans would be declining and you'll find more heaters isn't it the food as well the food you eat uh, even some of the food determined by your religion would be different based on different geographical location like uh, I'll, I'll give you an example of two different parts of India now Brahmins of Gujarat a pure vegetarian you can also say them vegan they don't even consume fish and they don't even consume eggs generally speaking this is an example I'm sorry if I'm offending anyone uh, this is just an example then if you go to West Bengal right both these uh, places are located on sea coast isn't it Gujarat is also located on sea coast and uh, uh, West Bengal is also located on sea coast but if you go to West Bengal then Brahmins of West Bengal uh, they do consume fish right fish is one of their uh, basic diet and if you go back, you will find it is uh, geography and again it is history of this place. Uh, even in one country, you find a difference of food based on 
historical reasons and some of them are of course 